Megyn Kelly hosted a GOP debate last night, had some very hard questions for all of the candidates, threw this bomb out to Ron DeSantis. Governor DeSantis, your campaign and its super PAC have spent the most money, had the most high net worth donors, and had a wave of momentum coming into this race after your big re-election win in Florida. You were seen by many as the candidate most likely to consolidate the non-Trump field. But here we are, a month out from the first real votes, and you haven't managed to do it. In fact, Nikki Haley is beating you in New Hampshire and South Carolina now, and closing in on you in Iowa. Not to mention Trump, who is not only dominating in the early states, but is beating you in Florida by over 30 points. Is it fair to say, as Senator Tim Scott did when he dropped out, that voters are telling you, not no, but not now? So we have a great uh, idea in America that the voters actually make these decisions, not pundits or pollsters. Uh, I'm sick of hearing about these polls. Joining me now, the great Megyn Kelly, journalist, host of The Megyn Kelly Show, which of course you can watch on Sirius XM or consume on Sirius XM Triumph Channel 111, youtube.com slash Megyn Kelly. Megyn, okay, there you were. Back there, moderating a debate, asking hard questions of candidates again. Did it feel good? Yes, it felt so good. Yes, because I think it's probably, I'm not a sports person, but I think it probably feels the way a sports person feels, an athlete, when he's been sidelined from an injury or she's been sidelined. And you watch all the other players and you're like, oh, I kind of want to be out there. And if, then you get you get back in. You're like, yes, okay, good. I know exactly how to do this. I want to do it my way. And I really thought like the whole thing was spectacular because the candidates showed up ready to play. And if they hadn't, if they if they didn't bring it, it would have been a lame debate. I mean, we had the cattle prod basically with those tough questions, but in the end, it's up to the candidates to make it good or not. And they they came, it was great. They did. What did you think of the DeSantis answer to that? That was quite a question to lob, lob at him right off the bat. Hey, you're getting crushed, what say you? How do you think he handled yeah. it? I know. I think it was fine. You know, I mean, what else can you say? You either have to say, um, well, you basically have to say the polls don't matter. You know, like the poll, you can't believe the polls, don't believe the polls. The polls said we were going to win in 2022 and we didn't. Um, that's what they all say when the polls are against them. So mm, there's not really a great answer to it. This is why I chose the question. You know, I, I wrestled with, I, I wrote electability, electability questions for all of them, Jesse. Nikki Haley, for me, it was either you're a war hawk uh, you're too tied to the banks and the billionaires or you're a political opportunist because you flip-flopped so many times on Trump. And in the end, you saw the one I went for. Vivek, to me, it was obvious which one to do with him. Christie, very obvious. And DeSantis was, mm, what is it? What is it about DeSantis that isn't resonating? What is it? And I, I just, I, I can't put it into words. For me, I think he's not a natural retail politician. And yet he's probably the most competent guy we could put in there. And I think the more time he's out there, the better he gets on the campaign trail. We saw that last night. You know, he may be peaking too late in the cycle. So in the end, I went with whatever it is. I don't know if it's your like your your crappy internal fighting of your campaign and your super PAC and all. I don't really care. All I know is you had all the advantages and that you didn't make the most of them because you're not where everybody thought you would be. And uh, it put him in a tough spot and he handled it probably the best one could. Yeah, I, I find that to be interesting. I, I'm glad you brought this up. I don't know, we probably should get to other things, but I'm, I'm interested in this. He is, look, resume-wise, there's, no, there's no, no debate. I mean, you look at Ron DeSantis, the Ron DeSantis resume is, it's, you can't even assault it. It's, it's perfection. And yet, yeah. the average American GOP primary voter, about half of them prefer Donald Trump over DeSantis. Is it just a personality thing? Is it the political persecution of Trump, which is admittedly evil and horrible? Is that what you think it is? I think it's all of that. And I just think Trump has come to represent, you know, the critics would say it's a cult. I think it's not a, it's not a cult, but he represents like the, you know, we've said it before, the, the, the breaking ball of the deep state, of all the things that have been crushing the lives of the working class GOP or GOP adjacent members for years. And they trust him. He came in. He's the big middle finger wrecking ball guy. And there's a relationship with him. And he's extremely dynamic. And he's funny. And he's a celebrity. He's a star. 
And it's kind of what like what would happen in the Democratic Party if George Clooney ran. You know, they fall in love with a different kind of leader. Republicans like their leaders kind of rough and tumble uh, and closer to the middle finger. So it's going to be very hard to tear that base away from Trump. That's what all of them last night are up against. No one's been able to come close. One person who I think is most definitely not going to come close, no matter how much fluff is out there, is Nikki Haley. As you pointed out earlier, a bunch of knives were out for her last night. Here's a little clip. The only person more fascist than the Biden regime now is Nikki Haley, who thinks the government should identify every one of those individuals with an ID. One thing that Joe Biden and Nikki Haley have in common is that neither of them could even state for you three provinces in eastern Ukraine that they want to send our troops to actually fight for. Look at that. This is what I want people to understand. These people have, I mean, she has no idea what the hell the names of those provinces are, but she wants to send our sons and daughters and our troops and our military equipment to go fight it. I signed legislation in Florida banning the mutilation of minors because it is wrong. We cannot allow this to happen in this country. And and I know Chris disagrees with me, and I think he has an honest position. Uh, Nikki disagrees with me. She opposes the bill that we did to ban that. She said the law shouldn't get involved with it. You said the law shouldn't get involved with it. She also, though, I think, and this is flows from what she did as governor of South Carolina, you know, they had a bill to try to say that men shouldn't go into girls' bathrooms. And she killed that bill, and she bragged that she killed that bill. Mm. Megan, okay, setting aside the substance of everything they just said there, which is fine, all that stuff's fine. Why so many knives out for Nikki Haley? She's third place. I, 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 don't, I don't know if you're seeing this race different than I am. Third place at best with no shot at the nomination. Yet she was the focal point of a lot of ire last night. Why? Well, because they're all competing to be number one in the undercard, right? First alternate to Trump. If Trump implodes, here I am. Look how pretty. Look at me. Remember when you fell in love with me at the debates? That's kind of what they're competing for. And right now, it's pretty much between DeSantis and Haley. I mean, it is between DeSantis and Haley. Vivek and Christie are way behind. Vivek had sort of a boomlet after the first debate and then kind of fell apart. He's been down around 3% since then, um, you know, net net. And so I think it's between these two. DeSantis finally learned that it's important to fight your rival and that if he doesn't, if he didn't try to punch Nikki, she was going to keep punching him or punching others and rising above him. She, he was crushing her in Iowa. Now she's within three points of him there. And that's his state. He did the full 99, as they call it, all the counties. He's invested tons of money and time and worker hours there. He needs to come close to Trump in Iowa, or at least crush everybody else in the field. So she's leading in North Carolina. She's leading, sorry, she's leaving in South Carolina and she's leading in New Hampshire. And she is within three points of him in Iowa. So he does have to attack her and he can't leave it all to Vivek Ramaswamy. He's got to show viewers with like a more voice of authority, which I think he has versus Vivek. No, there are serious problems with her. Slow your roll. Yeah. Megan, you are the best. We will talk again soon, I am sure. Give my best to your husband and his wonderful book. I had him on the other day. He was awesome. I appreciate you.